Renting has been made easy in Ghana using the Dara platform. <laughs> Boss, boss, rent your room for a day, Just go rent them, no stress. Boss, 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 I said the woman is calling you. Do you want water? Uh, mommy, Coco Day. Oh, Biggie, Cecilia, no Coco, no Majayo. May the men die at all, a day, or a pistol at a crack. Visit the Dana.com today, they get a space to stay. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Thai Conversations with Aida Padikonate. Thai simply means technology, innovation and entrepreneurship. And today we are going to do something different. We are going to be talking about innovative entrepreneurship that is tech enabled. And I'm going to be talking to three amazing gentlemen who have been able to use technology to connect property owners to home seekers. So I'm here with Edanra. And I have three amazing gentlemen with me on set. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure is ours. Okay, so I would love to introduce you, but I want you to introduce yourselves to my audience. So I'm going to start with Red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alfred, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Adara. Okay, White. Hi, my name is Bill, mm -hmm. and I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Adara. Okay. Yeah, I'm Jerome, and I'm the Head of Product Development at Adara. Okay. So I'm going to ask the CEO, um, how did Adanra come about? How did you come about the idea? Okay, um, so there are two points in the story. Um, so late 2018, uh, my dad was doing this building project in Takwa, and the goal was that when he's done, he wanted to find tenants to move into the space, right? So at the time, um, we were building a website for a campus church we all belong to at the time. So I pitched the idea to my friends that how about building a platform where um, someone like my dad could get tenants to move into his space without having to um, do a billboard or do a signpost, right? So people could find the property. And we started working on the project, but I think as fate will have it, we were very lousy about it. But then late 2019, we had the first hand property agent fraudulence and we took it seriously and decided to build a product. So yeah, after that, we did, we learned the MVP in 2020, late COVID and then, yeah, okay. here we are. Okay, so that means that your company is less than one year? Yes, typically. typically okay, yeah. so within this one year period, um, what have you been able to achieve? How many homes have you rented? Yeah. Okay, so um, when we launched the first version of the web app, mm -hmm. um, we had about from August to March this year, we had about 11,000 users. We listed about 1,800 properties for the MVP. Um, but then after launching Going Live fully, uh, we've had, that's been, it's been two months since we went live fully. We've registered, we've had about 13,000 unique users. We have about 548 properties across six regions in Ghana. Okay, so I'm going to ask um, Jerome. Jerome, what inspires you and keeps you on the team? Like, what keeps you here as um, head of development, right? So, um, the idea and then the problem that is out there people finding it difficult to um, find um, accommodation, mm. get them um, forwarded by agents and all that. It's really an issue that we have to tackle in Ghana. I really like that and it's really fun working with uh, the team. <laughs> like okay. <laughs> all right, Alfred, I'm going to ask you the same question. So what inspires you and keeps you on the team? Well, the first thing is the environment. So it's a youthful environment and working here is one of the best experiences I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I've had experience working with a company like uh, Toyota, how the whole corporate setting is. But at Adara, there's a lot of freedom and the idea is a very good one as well. Mm -hmm. So you look at all these other platforms and some, for some of them, putting up the properties and all that are very, very stressful. And for others, the user interface is not so good. So I think what we have now is very, very good. We are at a very good position um, as we are now. And I think that in a couple of months or years time, it now will grow to be very, very big. Okay. So um, you're talking about a couple of months, years. I want to ask your CEO again. Um, where do you see Adanra in the next 10 years? Okay. Um, so the end goal is that we are trying to make 
renting easy and affordable in Ghana. Okay. So there are two processes in the renting process, right? So we want to make it easy for people to find property to rent. Mm -hmm. We want to make it for easy to easy for people to pay for their rent, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there's an existing paradigm in Ghana where you have to get a property through an agent who's going to charge a hefty price, mm -hmm. and afterward the landlord is going to take you. He's going to be generous to take you a year <laughs> advance. Uh, it's not the same in other parts of the world, but that's the unfortunate situation we have here. So the idea is that in <clears throat> two years, in three years, uh, there will be a household name that has taken up, up this task to make renting easy for all Ghanaians. So okay. both finding and payment. Okay, so um, why do you think um, a property owner would love to pick your platform over maybe another platform or over a local agent? What, what is different about it, Danra? Who okay. wants to take it? Oh, Bill, okay. <laughs> See you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> so one thing we really did during the test phase right we use that process to really understand what the people in the space really wanted mm -hmm. um in the existing property platforms there's a lot of bureaucracy so, so to speak mm -hmm. so we decided to build a platform such that it will be extremely user friendly because the african society sorry but then is a little reluctant to digital platforms mm -hmm. so we decided to build a digital platform that is very friendly to the african context so okay. such that just a few steps will lead you to listing a property okay. and as well we decided to position ourselves to be with the young population of ghana the incoming generation so yeah basically those are they the are also young things. so you understand how they, you know, they well, what they want yes mm. so those are the two elements on the side of the property owner you're trying to create an extremely user-friendly platform they could put their property on and by aligning with the people who are looking for the property, your young people are understanding their demands, you get to meet the demands of the property owner who is looking forward to getting tenants for his property. Okay. So, so Alfred looks like he wants to say something. Alfred, do you want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So let me ask Alfred, um, what are some of the challenges you faced um, during the last, um, I think, 12 months okay. um, of being at Edanra? <laughs> Relation to building a platform. Yes. Okay. Building the platform, getting um, the accommodation, the houses to rent and to sell, and all of that. In relation to building the platform, like you said, we started in 2018, but we got to a point where we hit like a rough patch, mm. so we had to go for like a short break. Um, we had some development issues, but then we sorted everything out in um, early 2020. Mm. So that slowed us down quite a bit. And in relation to um, getting people on board, when we started, um, we used to call homeowners to put up their properties and stuff. But then some of them would be like, yeah, they'll get back to us. And then that's it, you never hear from them again. <laughs> Sometimes you call back and they'll be like, yeah, 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 okay. So they'll do it and then still they don't. So we had to bring in like extra help from outside, which also cost us some money. Um, so yeah, those are, two of the main challenges we faced. Okay. Yeah. And um, Jerome, yeah. do you have something to add to what he just said? Um, so, as he said, um, we, we started working on it way back in 2018. We started working on this way back in 2018 and then we just faced some issues. But, um, during post, um, COVID, the ending part of the COVID period in 2020, we were able to put up our MVP. Okay. Yeah, and that's where we've been. Okay. So he spoke about development issues. Now, I don't want to just assume that all of you are programmers or computer science students or <laughs> computer engineering students. I just want to know like your background. I know I didn't, I, I didn't talk about that at the beginning, mm -hmm. but just for my viewers who so are just wondering, like, wait, like, is this guy a chemical engineer or he's a computer <laughs> yeah. science? Uh, whatever. So, so Jerome, what, what, what's your background? Okay, so I'm an electrical engineer by okay. profession. Yeah, okay. I studied electrical engineering in school. What school? Cambridge. Uh, KNUST. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same thing. Yeah. KNUST. KNUST. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And Bill? Yeah, so we met at the same school, so we all went to KNUST. Okay, all of you KNUST. Yeah, okay. um, I studied petrochemical engineering. Yeah, here yeah. could <laughs> 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 All yeah. right. And Alfred? I studied mechanical engineering. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Sure. Unexpected blend. <laughs> All right. So, um, so that's interesting, you know, having mechanical, petrochem, and electrical engineering. So, what um, spiked the interest in 
um, programming. What, what, what led you to become um, programmers? Because you said you were working on your church website and then it led to this part. So were you just experimenting or you're volunteering? What exactly happened? Let me start with Jerome. Okay, so I started learning how to um, program um, because I wanted to make money to buy a robotics kit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I ended up um, liking it and then, yeah, that's why I am. So, yeah, that's really interesting. So did you buy the robotics kit? For my final year project work. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I don't know, we have a lot in common in that regard. It's actually robotics that got all of us into the tech space. Um, okay. So from SHS, I had exposure to robotics. I was a graph, mm. Ghana Robotics Academy Foundation. As I got exposed to coding and robotics. And when we fast forward to the university, I really didn't take it seriously again. So I, had to, I don't know, I just dropped it until I met um, Alfred and Jerome again. And then the whole interest came back again. So, yeah, okay, it's robotics. Alfred, you two robotics. Okay. Yeah, so... Wait, did you guys, were you guys in like a robotics club along the way or you just had an interest in robotics? Okay, I was. You were? Yes. Okay. You weren't? I wasn't in any robotics. Okay. I just wanted to do it as a <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. So, how did you end up as a programmer? So, um, I wanted to do robotics. I think when I was going to SHS. Okay. So, um, I decided to go to Adisco because at that time we were offering ICT with the science. Okay. So when I went, um, I think in our very first term, one guy hacked the school Wi-Fi. And it was quite fun because we all wanted a password. The man said he wouldn't give it to us. And we saw the guy open the terminal, he was writing some codes, and the next thing we saw, the and password access. Was <laughs> So that's what got all of us interested. So at that point, mm. we all wanted to learn how to code. So after SHS, I didn't have a laptop back in SHS, so I had one after SHS. I started experimenting with different languages and stuff. And then when I came to KNUSD, I finally settled on web development. So that's when we started with the church website. And then through that, I met Jerome and Bill. Okay. So um, some time ago, I came across um, your post about helping national service personnel um get easy accommodation when it comes to you know relocating to new regions and getting mm -hmm. accommodation for their service and i want you to talk a little bit about that what's that project all about and what do you hope to seek what inspires that okay um so as a company that's actually the primary um reason why we took it seriously in 2019 right okay. uh, because a national service personnel wanted a space and an agency defrauded him so oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we realized that um Yes, the posting process is okay, mm. but nobody, after you've been posted, say you live in Accra, for example, I take myself, I live in Takwa, I was posted to Accra to come and do my national service, mm. but nothing facilitated my accommodation process. I had to come to Accra, make inquiries to get a space, right? Mm. So as a company, we realized that there's a, this thing happens annually and there's a huge problem. So uh, it feeds back into the main vision of the company that... We want NSS people every year to be able to come to Adara every year and then find space wherever they've been posted. And outside that, we help them pay for their rent on a monthly basis as a people. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to roll out that service fully this year and um, coming this year. And then we see how that goes for all of us. Okay, that's nice. That's good to hear. So you mentioned that you help um, the National Service personnel pay for the accommodation. So how do you do that? Because it's, it's, it's obvious how you connect them to the accommodation, yeah. but then how do you help them to pay? Pay for the rent. Okay, okay so um, one of the um, features that we want to develop into our application is um, helping the home seeker to pre-finance their accommodation. Okay. Then, yeah, we can, they can pay back monthly, whether we take it from source or yeah, they pay back monthly. So we pay for the one year advance, two year advance for them. Oh, then, nice. Yeah, they can pay for it monthly. It's still in development. We want to integrate it into the NSS. So it's like you give them a loan? Yes. With interest? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, so right now we are carrying partner, partner in certain financial institutions. Okay. And they are not taking the conventional loan interest for this particular service. Okay. Yeah, so if, say, there's 16% out there, they're mm. going to take probably, they're taking about 5% for just the service. Okay. So they pre-finance, yeah. yes, they pre-finance your rent and then 
is taken from your source and it's deducted on a monthly basis. So it's not just going to be for the NSS people. Anybody in Accra, anybody in Ghana can rent that way. Because that's the issue. People can't pay the advance the landlords are asking for. And because of the deficit in the market, the landlords are also not ready to compromise and take monthly payments. They want the advance payment. Yes. Okay. So. so Alfred, how do you um, look for a home on the Danra? Can you take us through the process of um, renting on your website? Okay, so um, to look for a home, mm. when you go to the site on the home page, um, there are actually two... www.edara.com Okay. E D A N R A. Okay. okay. So on the home page, the very first page you see, there's actually um, a search panel on the right side where you can input um, the town, the region, uh, I think the rooms, the number of rooms also. Okay. And then at the very top in the nav as well, um, there's a search um, input field over there. When you click on it, it also drops down and you can input the same stuff. So you input what you want, you hit search, it takes you to the search page. You have a list of properties and you can filter through them as well. And with putting up properties as well, we have two different categories right now. We have the regular ads and we have the dynasty. Regular ads are for those who just want to put up um, properties for um, tenants to call and ask or find out more details about it and stuff. So basically for long stays. So, and then the Adara stays for short stays. It's mm -hmm. like the Airbnb model. Where, yeah, let's say you want to stay for maybe three nights, you book the place, and then you pay through our system. So those are the two property classes that we have right now. So to put up a property, we ask you for basic information, and we keep it short. I think the form is in about five or six steps, very, very short. So you put it up, and then we also have a dashboard for managing the ads as well. So in case you want to delete, an ad you want to edit it take out some pictures and all that and basically okay, before you continue how do you ensure that um a property owner is not i don't know defrauding someone yeah. though you want to take that one okay sure uh, <clears throat> so yeah he's mentioned we have to we have two property classes right so with the dynasty if i'm to book for a place and make payments via our platform mm -hmm. um we don't release the fund to the property owner until you've been checked out okay. so when you check out, then we release funds to the property owner. That's okay. with the dynasty. With the regular rental, um, we have a gross team, and they do back checks on properties that have been listed to ensure that they have being um, the actual properties. Currently, you're actually rolling out a service for to verify and indicate the verified properties on the platform. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we, it's something we really are really keen on, and we're working on it. Okay. So my last question, um, what has been your most fulfilling moment with the Danra? So I'm going to start with Jerome. Okay, so our most fulfilling moment with the Danra was when we rolled out our MVP. Mm. We stated earlier that we had an issue with um, our technology and working on the platform. Um, it, was, it was a really um, confusing stage. It was a stage that mm. was like having a lot of priorities coming in and then pushing things back and forth. But when we actually came out, um, Alfred really helped us with that. When it actually came out, it was yeah. really um, fulfilling. It was like, finally, this thing is out. Yeah, yeah. it was really good. Okay, Alfred, the most fulfilling moment to the demo. Okay. Um, so for me, I think it was um, some weeks back. I think oh. Bill, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill was in, I think, was it a Chotro? Yeah, the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see you. <laughs> Bill, Bill hey. was in a, a church and he said um, he had some ladies mm -hmm. um, okay. talking about um, finding a place to stay. And one of them was like, have you heard about Edara? Oh, and, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Bill was in the car and he was feeling big and he told us. <laughs> 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 and I was like, um, I didn't think we would get to this point. It was kind of like a dream because mm. when we started out, it got to a point, like Jerome was saying, we had lost all hope. I mm. called um, some of the deputy CTO and I was mm. like, I wanted to stop. He told me I should keep on going. So mm. when I heard that story, I was like, we've done something. We've at least mm. built something that is helping people. And this is amazing. Like I'm really even inspired by what you're doing, even with them sitting here today. And I think you guys shouldn't stop. You should keep pushing and, you know, doing more. So see you.
Mm. What's been your most fulfilling moment? <laughs> okay. Um, for me, I, every moment along the line has been fulfilling in a sense, but the climax it was when um, we just we had a retreat. Mm. We actually had a retreat as a team. And seeing everybody here gathered and understanding what we are trying to do was really fulfilling for me. Like mm. having a group of 10 people, people who have forfeited their actual jobs, big time paying jobs, to come and build this thing with us. It was really, um, it's really been sublime for me. And I think it gives us the hope that we are, we are doing something. We are so actually solving a problem mm. we are all facing. So yeah, for me, it's wow. been very recent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I forgot to ask this at the beginning. I just want to know what does Edanra mean, Alfred? Okay, so Edanra means home owner or house owner. So it's actually um, the tree. So a dying tree, house. Ghanaian language yes. tree. Okay. And then ra like owner. But okay. then it was the full a dying ra, the spelling E D A N W U R A. Mm. But then Jerome brought the suggestion where he was like, should <laughs> Manage kind of it. cut it short because it helps with SEO and stuff. So then we're like, yeah. And it's cool too. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's been exciting having a conversation with you three. And I hope to see more of your works and more of your amazing ads. So when you think renting, think Edanra. So this has been a conversation with these wonderful gentlemen from Edanra. We are going to take a look at one of the properties listed on their platform. Mm -hmm.